tonight from Empower Field at Mile High in Denver. It's Thursday Night Football on EA Sports. Coverage of the NFL has us at the foot of the Rockies, just west of downtown Denver at Empower Field at Mile High. The scene a few moments ago, here it is. It's unlike any other in sport as both teams made their way out of the tunnel. These folks are fired up as their guys are ready to do battle between the Cleveland Browns and the Denver Broncos. Brandon Gordon, Charles Davis, happy to be back alongside you. And I'll tell you what, yes, it's just week two of the preseason, but now they've got one game under their belts and a lot of guys trying to prove some stuff down on the field here today. Not only that, these coaches like to win. And I used to think it really didn't matter who won in the preseason. Then I watched some of those shows that the NFL does, and you see the coaches in preseason after a loss jumping all over their guys. So I learned one valuable lesson. Wins and losses count no matter what time of year it is. Taken in the end zone. And this will go as a touchback, and they will begin things at the 25. The former Missouri Tiger, Drew Locke, will be at quarterback as he leads out the Denver Broncos. And what I enjoyed in preparing for this game was talking not just with the coaching staff, but with him as well. And I found it interesting that the coaching staff sees him one way, and he sees himself in an entirely different way. Yeah, one thing he said he's always working on, he's, we know he's not bad at this, but his footwork always wants to improve that, and that's something he's going to focus on here. And what was so funny, what the offensive coordinator say right off the top, he's got great footwork. Love his footwork. So this guy is never satisfied. And the first play of the drive there is incomplete. So now here in the second week of the preseason, you'd expect the starters play a little bit more than they did in week one, but not a whole lot. So if you're an offensive coordinator, what are you looking for? What you're looking for is things getting cleaned up as you go along because most of your playbook's probably installed. How well are they handling it? Easy in and out of the huddle? No mental mistakes? Are they starting to look like a good offensive football team? An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. To throw again. Lock. This is the tight end fan. And he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27. I think it's okay there. They didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. An early tough test on the opening drive. This is third and eight. Shotgun snap to lock. And that will be incomplete. So the defense able to get off the field here on third down. And it's one of the goals of the game. They've got to be effective on passing downs. It's one of the few things defenses chart. How did we do on third down? That's a nice start for them in this one. And here now the punter Martin booming this one away. being a net of 41. Nine yard return, 50 on the punt. And the Browns will take over first and 10. And here are the Browns for their opening drive. Leading them out is the Austin, Texas native at quarterback, it's Baker Mayfield. It's okay if I give him a few props right here. Do you mind? I think he's earned it, go ahead. Okay, how about a guy who was a two-time walk-on, who later became a two-time Big 12 player of the year, has the most touchdown passes in Big 12 history with 129. A Heisman Trophy into his credit. And to his team to the college football playoff semifinal twice while at Oklahoma. That's some good hard running there as he'll push his way forward for about five. That's a really nice tough run inside and they gained five yards on it and be frank about it. 
Most offenses don't expect to get five yards on a play call like that. So when they do, they go back to their huddle with a little pep in their steps. They're starting to think that they're starting to dominate the line of scrimmage. Well, one unit I know you want to watch is that offensive line. If they keep corner on like that, that could be a long night defensively. No doubt about it, because when they are in sync, as we're seeing so far, when that continuity is there, and you can see that they're playing off of each other while controlling the defensive front and linebackers, you're exactly right. It could be a very long night for the defense because someone's going to run for some big yardage. On first down, they'll run with Chubb. Breaks the tackle. He's got room to run. Another nice gain, 16 yards there, and a first down again. He's tackled at the 40. So back to back, big runs, picking apart this defense on the opening drive. I thought this was a passing league. I thought this was the <laughs> era we were in where the ball was always in the air, right? They didn't get the memo. They didn't get the memo, and I know this to be true. Offensive linemen still, to this day, they want to run the football. They want to fire out and hit people across the line of scrimmage, and they're clearing space. Show a first and ten now in Denver territory, right at the 40. Mayfield hands it off to Chubb. A gain of three, second down. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. They'll try to throw here. Mayfield going deep here for Landry. And nearly an interception here on their opening drive. But instead, third down. So many times we see teams go on the road and want to lean on their running game. But this crew just announced they're going to try and air it out and make hay downfield. They'll need to get it to the 30 for a first. This is third down. A run for Nick Chubb. A great effort there to shed the contact, and it helps him pick up the first. An effective seven-yard third down conversion. You were telling me this yesterday. That's exactly what they want to do on the opening drive, establish the ground game. Yeah, remember our conversation? We were talking about what one of the GMs in the league has told me repeatedly. It's a big man's game, and it's not necessarily size. He's talking about playing some big boy football. Line up, get leverage, knock people back, and establish the run early. So first and 10 now from the 30. Now Mayfield. And his throw here is incomplete. You know, during these preseason games, we're in week two right now. It's always funny looking at our spot charts up here in the booth because with all the guys that might play in this one, it seems to get bigger and bigger each year. Yeah, we pretty much supersize them, don't we? <laughs> because, you know, remember, they're carrying 90 now. And with the new rules, they'll carry 90 all the way through the preseason before they make the final cut. Oh, yeah, a lot of guys to learn for these games. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. 12 yards there and a first down. Quite the opening drive march they're on right now. It looks a lot like what we saw in practice prior to the game, doesn't it? You know, because on that last big practice beforehand, you go through your offensive script, you go through your play calling, you go through all the stuff and establish things, and it looks like it's going like clockwork right now for them. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. They run. Chubb. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Tackled by Bradley Chubb, the number five pick in the 2018 draft. And a quick observation, Brandon, because early on in this game, I'm seeing linebackers point their noses close to the line of scrimmage. And my guess is the wheels are turning on that other sideline. As a play caller, you're filing that away right now, aren't you? Yeah, you're trying to find that opportunity later on when you
you can play action them or stick something. And that's going to be caught for a Browns touchdown. Carson Bryant there to make the grab. And you've got to see a fist pump on the sideline from the head coach, don't you? Because he's turned into his bench, and he's telling his team, this is how we prepare. Force the punt, go downfield and score. I told you guys, it's just like a boxer in the gym preparing for the fight. Now we get to turn it all loose. Graham Gano on for the extra point. It's up and through to make it 7-0 Browns. A 10-play drive that time. And it ends with a touchdown for Cleveland. Touchdown, here's Cyber now to kick it off. And that's fielded on the back line of the end zone. And this will not be brought out, it's a touchback. So now the second drive offensively coming up for the Denver Broncos. And the first drive, three and out. Second possession, see if they can get a little momentum. And oftentimes that first drive is just a feeling out process. You have some plays that you've got called and you want to see how defense reacts. It may not go terrific on the first one. Now they're ready to go. They've kind of got a look at them, got a sense. Let's see if they open things up a little bit. See if they open things up. Let's see what the defense does here, too, after a good stop. Philip Lindsay, and he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here, and if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up the score. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big-time play? Lock going to throw. Got a man open. It's Sutton. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. Lock and Sutton on the connection there for a Denver first down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Now this one to his tight end out on the right side. And able to rip off a big chunk of yardage before being dropped inside the 40. The extra effort after the catch makes it good for a gain of 26 and also a first down. They're utilizing his big target. He didn't overthink it. Understands the catch radius. Understands that he knows how to use his body to keep defenders away from the ball. And puts it right out there for the nice pickup. So a first and 10 upcoming from Brown's territory now at the 38. To throw it is lock. Under pressure and he'll go down. They'll sack him on what ought to be the final play of this first quarter. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. Round seven, Broncos nothing. Second and fourteen as they've got work to do here after the sack. Lock on the give. It's Lindsey. 
one past the 30, down to the 25. Time to go to work. Let's go. And that one heck of a run right there. Once he got loose, you could tell that he was going to run a long way. That was pretty impressive. And first and foremost, this is all about vision. He could see the play developing right in front of him. And once he's past the line of scrimmage and got a full head of steam behind him, He's just going to keep right on going. And the next-gen stats show him reaching at a top speed of 20 miles an hour. They'll keep it on the ground. This time it's Gordon. They give him about three as he gets it down to the 22-yard line. Charles, we get a look at the draft class here for this team. What do you think? Well, I think for the most part, I do like what they did because, to me, they got some solid players in the early rounds. And then if I'm correct in my evaluation, they got some great value in the later rounds as well. The last run got three. Now here's second and seven. They'll give it to Gordon out of the shotgun. And he was able to shed one tackle, but could not get away from there. A minimal gain there on the eighth play of the drive. He's definitely tough to get down. We just saw it right there. But how about what we did see? Pursuit, wrap up, and then the big finish with the tackle. The Browns' D locked in on third down. Brings up fourth. More problems here on third down. They've converted only once so far in this first half. And you know as well as I do in this league, if you don't win on third down, it makes it hard to win a ball game because then you're relying on your defense, you're relying on your special teams. You've got to get it done with your offensive unit. So in the end, they had the ball for 10 plays, but the drive gets them three, not six. Is it okay if I give credit to both sides on this one? Absolutely. All right, let's start defensively. They hung in there. Ten-play drive. But they stiffened when they got close to the goal line, made him kick a field goal for the offense. Ten-play drive. They might be a little disappointed they got a field goal, but they moved the ball down the field with dispatch and came away with points. Now Nick Chubb of the Browns get set for their next possession. It may just be the second quarter, but he's in his zone well on his way to eclipsing that 100-yard mark. And when a back has a game, as we're witnessing right now, his name's going to be in the books. But it's really a collective deal, isn't it? Because that the means line. he's getting plenty of blocking, a lot of help from his teammates, but he's making the most of it. Yeah, he's made the most of it to this point. They start on the ground with Nick Chubb. Give him 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give him a first down. For a lot of guys playing this game, there's no better feeling than running right through a tackle. He's able to lower his center of gravity and turn his legs for a really nice pickup. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Carry it's Chubb. And another tackle broken. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. A good pick up there for the Browns. 15 yards. He's a little relentless out with guys who are good on the field. How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? Show a first and ten now in Denver territory at the 48-yard line. Now Chubb. And a six-yard gain gets him right around the 43. That's a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. And this is going to be another first down as they'll make the tackle at the Broncos' 25-yard line. Good route, good pickup for first down yardage, and that is a tough one to cover, the angle route, because a running back getting out of the backfield, 
If you're trying to cover that, especially if you're in the linebacker spot and you're seeing this play develop, he heads out towards the flat first, and that often gets you to overcommit running in that direction. Then he cuts back up inside you into the middle of the field. That's what we just saw there for a nice pickup. Chubb. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. The previous run, good for nine. Here's second and a yard. On the ground, it's Chubb. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Cleveland. A 16-yard touchdown run. And the Browns add six to their lead. People always talk about one of his biggest strengths, running the football vision, and he found the spot there, went into the end zone. You're exactly right about that. It wasn't just the vision, right? Once he saw the gap, decisiveness, made up his mind, and about the power to finish the play. Not only did he get good blocking, he created his own space as well. Gano for the extra point. And this one's right through to make it a 14-3 ball game. A drive that time of six plays. And Nick Chubb the one to finish it off as he does so with a touchdown run. Austin Seibert to kick off for Cleveland. Following the touchdown, here's Seibert now to kick it off. Now this will make it into the end zone. And no effort to bring this one out. It's a touchback. Denver's offense ready to go again. They trail now 14 to 3, an 11 point deficit as they start things out with a first and 10. left in the opening half. Coming up at the half, a reminder, we go back to Orlando to check in with Jonathan Coachman. He'll have a look back at our first half as well as a look ahead to what's coming up later this weekend. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. As we thought they might do here in week two of the preseason, they've left their starting quarterback out there for this second quarter, but I would imagine we will not see him after halftime. Yeah, this is the time of year you've got to get your backup some reps and make sure you protect your starting quarterback. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. Five yards, now it's third and five. Let's just make this one simple. Could he be any more open than he was on that play? Yeah, they lost him going to the outside. Hard to believe because you go through your accounting on each and every defensive snap. Who's got who? What, what defense you're in? That was totally a blown coverage. He's got his big tight end fan. And he's out of bounds just before the midfield strike at the 49. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. Now lock again. He completes this to Sutton. And he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. Faking the give to Lindsey. Here's Locke. But one of the ways that quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. You make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. Now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Yeah. 
This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Into the red zone, it's Lock. And his pass incomplete. To this point, I've been impressed with the work defensively. They have not allowed a lot of receivers to run free. And there's another example, another incompletion. Back to the air on second down, it's Lock. They'll get this to Hamler over the middle. And the Broncos are going to be looking at first and goal as they move this down to the four-yard line. He's got his first catch here before halftime, and it goes for a first down. Well, that was a fun one to watch right there. A nice in-breaking route and plenty of room in the middle of the field. And he was able to get behind the linebackers and grab the completion for a really good pickup. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. Now, here's a look for the end zone, but that one's going to wind up incomplete. So much for the best laid plans and best designed plays. That was good coverage along the sidelines. No place for that one to get in there. It sails incomplete. Line of scrimmage, again, the four-yard line. Second and goal. Again, it's Lock. And this is caught for a Bronco touchdown. Got to be patient, baby. Just got to be patient. Cleveland Sutton there to make the grab. And the Broncos have cut it to within a score. I think everyone in the league talks about finishing, don't they? Doesn't matter whether it's a quarter, a half, a game, a series, whatever. But they're finishing the first half in fine style, putting that one in the end zone. They did, and they didn't leave much time on the clock either. Well done. Matthew McCrane on for the PAT. And he's got it. That cuts the lead. It's now 14 to 10. So the drive goes 75 yards, 10 plays. And it ends with a Denver touchdown. So after the touchdown, Martin now on to kick this one away. That'll be taken about a yard deep. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. The offense trots back out there. Let's turn our focus now to Nick Chubb. He's already cruised past the 100-yard mark. We haven't even gone away for halftime yet. He might not want halftime. <laughs> all right, why cool off? Keep well, everybody here. <laughs> let's stay out on the field and keep going. But all that being said, everything is really working well for them. The play calling's been excellent. The blocking's been terrific. And obviously his vision and legs have hurtled him to this big number so far. We could be seeing something really special here. Well, this is taken in. It's complete. And he's taken down right at the 45-yard line. That goes for a gain of 31. Able to hit on a big play right there in the two-minute drill. Now they've got a chance to use all the remaining clock and build on their lead right before halftime. So the big play moves him all the way across midfield. It's first and 10 from the 45. From the shotgun, it's Mayfield. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Well, the incompletion, yes, but maybe here not the worst thing in the world? No, not on first and 10. Actually gives him a chance to regroup, relax just a little bit. They huddle up, talk it over. Then they get a chance to continue their drive. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Oh, he's able to now muscle him here as he pulls it in. Now the Browns signal for the second of their timeouts as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. zone now Mayfield that is caught at the seven the Browns will quickly use their third and final timeout as they stop it with 11 seconds remaining in this first half
Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. And this is caught. Touchdown, Cleveland. Austin Hooper in the final seconds of the first half. And the Browns are going to tack on to their advantage. So simple math here in the first half. They've had three drives offensively, and they have scored every time, and they've got the lead. Well, whenever we talk about adjustments, we usually talk about an offense making adjustments, right? This is all about the defense. They've got to figure out some way, somehow, to slow them down. Do they blitz a little bit more? Do they play more zone coverage? Right now, they don't know where to go because they're hitting them in every direction. Gano now to add the extra point. It's good, and it's 21-10. Five plays there on that drive, and it's capped off by the Browns' touchdown. Austin Seibert to kick off for Cleveland. So six seconds, all that remains of this first half as the kick is away. And this will make it into the end zone. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half, he'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25. Well, the white flag coming out as they line up to kneel on it. And with time running short here, they'll simply take a knee and that should do it for half number one. So we have reached halftime here in an 11-point contest. As we send you on out to our studios in Orlando, here's Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. We'll get back to you and Charles in just a minute. Week two of the preseason is upon us. We've got two more after this one, and then we get it all started as we normally do on the first Thursday after Labor Day. In our game, still a lot to keep an eye on. Guys battling. Trying to make a ball club. We'll send it back to two guys already on our team. That's Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Expect to see a good number of backups going forward as we are back and underway here in preseason week two. And they'll get him down right at the 25-yard line, so the same result had he opted for the touchback. And the Browns getting set to go. They've got the lead, and certainly a big reason why some of these catches we take a look at right now. And I've seen it so many times that when units start to play really well, they feed off of each other and play even better. And they're making every catch possible. Contested, non-contested, easy, difficult, big-time plays. And right now, that's why their team's in the lead. The Browns drive about to get started. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys, but be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. And he's going to have a Browns first down as the tackle made here at the 36. That one, a first down pickup of eight. They certainly have to get a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time and making it work. So from the 36 now, first and 10. And a six-yard gain gets him right around the 43. Now, Brandon, that's the way you want to run the football. There should almost be quote bubbles above the offense right now. Bam, boom, biff. That's how they feel good about moving the football.
six yards on that last play. Here's second and four. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he'll get it out to midfield. Let's see, yeah, they'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. Seven yards there and a first down. We don't talk about it very often, but sometimes there's a dip in intensity when you start the second half, which can manifest itself in some sloppy tackling. And how about right there? He ran right through that weak tackle attempt. Oh, incomplete. A turnover would have really helped there. Almost intercepted. Instead, it's just second down. They've given up a few first downs on this drive, but getting the incompletion there, that should give them something to build on and maybe turn the tide. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. And to give this time to the tailback. And he'll work free from one tackle, but that's about all as he's taken down. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? A nickel set defensively for the Broncos here on third down. They'll set up to throw. Oh, incomplete. Nearly the pick they needed. They would have loved one there, but at least it does get them to fourth down. As defensive coordinators around the league tell me all the time, that throw is not for every quarterback because you've really got to drive the ball downfield. It's going to be a tight window for him to fit that one into. In this case, unsuccessfully. And here's Gillen on now to punt as he gets this one away. The Broncos take over first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. So now a look at the Broncos as they head back out there for their first possession of the second half. And Charles, they trail by a couple of scores, but if they could put a good drive together here, it'd go a long way toward getting them back in this football game. And if you're looking at a checklist of things that they need to do in the second half, Job number one was getting a stop, wasn't it? So big check right there. Now they want to see if their offense can build on that momentum. They'll run with Freeman here to begin the drive. Gets this to the 24 for a gain of four. Well, the end of all that hitting and hollering, it was a four-yard run, so the offense is going to go back down and feel pretty good about themselves. Defensively, you have to feel okay because you didn't let it turn into a bigger run, but the goal, shut it down for two yards or less. That's when you start to feel good about yourselves. They'll come up second and six now from the 24. And here comes throw number one for the backup QB. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Deshaun Hamilton, the intended receiver. And it's third down. And the passing windows are just not there. And that's just another example of how great this defense has been all game long. And that's exactly what a top 10 defense can do. They can really change the game tempo and frustrate you as you try to execute offensively. And he's not going to sniff the first down here. He stopped at the 25. Only able to get back a yard for his efforts, and that leads us to fourth down. How about a tip of the cap to the defense? They're working against a very mobile quarterback, but all day long they've kept him under wraps. And on that play, they held him to a short gain. Here's Sam Martin now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. He'll send this away to the Rocky Mountain Knight, and it's a good one. This will be fielded at the 17. That's going to go in the books as a 55-yard punt. Well done. And possession will switch hands first and 10. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. This crew had to punt last time they had the ball, but when you've got a lead like this, you can tend to play the field position game. You are to an extent, especially if you like your defense, because you have the lead, you've been controlling the game. But why put them in a tougher spot? You want to get out there and get something done on offense and maybe take command of this game yourself. Now a handoff here to his running back. Nowhere to go that time. Might have gotten a yard up to the 25. 
Well, sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense. Great job there at the point of attack, holding up. They won their battles at the line of scrimmage, left him no space to try and run. A really nice job swarming to the ball carrier. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. Looking for his running back, and he's got him. 20! And they're going to have this way down deep in Denver territory. It's a big play there for the Browns. 65 yards. Well, partner, I'm not sure how this drive's going to end, but how about the way they flip field position there? A nice attacking play. They picked up a heck of a chunk of yardage. So on the other side of the field now, it's first and 10 as they've got things rolling on this drive. And he'll give it here to his running back. That gets him three yards closer here as it brings up second and goal. Let's give a lot of credit to the offensive line. They've been able to move the ball really well on the ground the entire game. And while that wasn't a huge one, that's okay. They'll take him in short, steady bursts. The line of scrimmage, the seven now on second and goal. Going to give this time to the tailback. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Browns touchdown. Taking it in from seven yards away. And the Browns add on to their lead. We know that the big guys won't get the credit, Brandon, but we also know that that touchdown belongs to them. Excellent job of clearing the way for their running back. for the extra point. And the lead is up to 18 now. So that drive, four plays. And in the end, it's capped off by a seven-yard run. Austin Seibert to kick off for Cleveland. Following the touchdown, here's Seibert now to kick it off. Fielded near the back of the end zone. And we will not see a run back here from Harris. And Denver getting set to take the field. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. Then they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked Go to so something well, else. And maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. They'll try to get the ground game going with Freeman. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Nice way to start the drive, a gain of 12 and a first down. When he runs, he seems to do a nice job of knowing when to be patient and find the hole, and then when the hole is there, he goes quickly. You're exactly right. He knows how to just take off, but you know what else? Brings a little thump with him, doesn't he? He does. He packs the boom at the end of the run and finishes it going forward. That's what you want to see out of your backs. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Freeman again, a first down carry. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. This is Freeman. And he got blown up. Losing yardage on the play back at the 44. Go. 
One quarter remains here in this Thursday night matchup. We'll return with more preseason football on EA Sports. The Broncos on third down, two for five to this point. This is third and four. From the gun, Richardson. And he's got his man in stride, complete. And this effort won't be enough as they rally up to stop him a couple of yards short. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give him that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. And this is incomplete. Well, it looked like he had it and dropped it. And the Browns are going to get this thing back. Excellent field position. Well, they clearly made a conscious decision here to be more aggressive in the late stages of this game here in the second half. And I get it. In this situation, you know, if you want to be aggressive out near midfield, you feel good about your defense maybe, or just, hey, I thought I had a proper play call. But how about the guys that just stopped them? How good do they feel right now? Uh, hey, you want to go for it here? We shut you down. They're over on the bench right now feeling great. Give them three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. And he's taken down inside the 30. Give him 14 on that one and a first down. Yeah, I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Bring out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to take it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. Now a handoff here to his running back. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. Didn't get to the sticks, but that's an ideal carry there on first down, isn't it? I mean, now you're second and one. Although, you know, in the NFL, even if you picked up the first down, I don't think it's a big difference because the clock doesn't stop. Yeah, not like college. Right. If it's college football, you want to second and one is probably better than picking up the first down because in college football, the clock stops with every first down and actually aids the defense in that situation. This is caught, and he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Cleveland. A 20-yard touchdown, and the Browns add six to their lead. Getting your back involved, what's the importance there in the passing game? Well, oftentimes you can create mismatches because who's going to cover him? And you get him into space, which is where he likes to operate with the ball in his hands. Oftentimes makes people miss, gets that run after the catch, and off he goes. And into the end zone. Gano now to add the extra point. Now he's been a busy man, five for five now, as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. A drive there of just four plays, and it ends with a touchdown for Cleveland. Austin Seibert to kick off for Cleveland. Following the touchdown, here's Seibert now to kick it off. This will make it into the end zone. And we will not see a run back here from Harris. 
Here's the Denver offense now as they get set to take over here. And last time out, went for it on fourth down, turned it over, gave them great field position, turned it to six points, so they've got to recover here, Charles. It's amazing what one decision can do in the chain of events, right? The decision to go for it on fourth down. Caused all of that. It caused every bit of it, but it showed confidence. Hey, I've got confidence in you guys. Go pick it up for them. Didn't happen. Also showed confidence in the defense. They didn't pick up their end of the bargain. So now they've got to come back out and start over and rebuild that confidence. A throw taken in by Hamilton. Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and it'll be second and very short. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route, and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps, and cuts towards the middle of the field, and now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and get the quarterback a really nice target. It's a first down on a gain of 10. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. Richardson now throwing on first down. On the move to his left. He'll run it. And out of bounds on the other side of midfield at the 45. Nothing open downfield. He keeps it himself for 11 and a first down. There's an excellent job of recognizing the situation. His first read wasn't there. Heck, his second read wasn't there himself a little extra time scrambling out of the pocket got to the sticks and picked up the first down so signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half here's first and ten operating from the gun Richardson and now he's going to use his legs Give him a couple on the scramble. It's second down. Well, you admire anyone trying to pick up an additional couple of yards. They're just not worth it when you take shots like that. Quarterbacks have to stay in the game and stay on the field. Now Richardson off the play fake. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked up by M.J. Stewart. And he's able to get it back to the 33-yard line. I'm sure as a rookie, even though this is preseason, Charles, interceptions you got to eat at you quite a bit. They certainly do, but here's the problem that he's confronted with. He's not the high draft pick. He's not seen as the next guy. He's got to prove himself to everyone and get noticed. So maybe instead of taking the safer throw, you press it a little bit, try and push it downfield, try and fit into a tight window, and sometimes interceptions result. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. He'll look to throw. He's got his man on the crossing route. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. 25 yards that time. Offensively, another big chunk of yards, Charles. But defensively, they had all this talk about trying to limit explosive plays. They have not been able to do that. They discussed it all week, but they haven't been able to execute it at all. Haven't been able to find a way to slow down this offense. They're seeking answers and not coming up with any. They go play action here on first down. And a scary incompletion, almost picked off. It would have been their first INT of the game. Instead, second day. <laughs> so the Browns in possession of the football here as we get you reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. And this is why aggressive defense coordinators love to blitz. It wreaks havoc because they end up taking their attention to the blitzers, freed up the D linemen to make the play. If they want a first, they need to get the football to the 32 here on third down. Back to throw here. Blitz coming and down he goes. 
Cruz. That's just not my one on one. If you're out of the pocket, you've got to get rid of the football in this situation. You cannot take a sack in a two minute drill. will use the first of their three timeouts. That'll leave them with two remaining. We'll be back after this. Here's Jamie Gillendale as he'll kick it away for the second time. First kick, 47. This one looks good as well. The Broncos take over first and ten at their own 20. Denver's offense ready to go again. They've lost this one. Their offense has struggled. Do they try to put together something here at the end just to take into next week? Yeah, sometimes teams want to do that and coaches want to. I remember one time I was on a team and we were losing late in the game like this and you knew it was lost. It was over, right? And the coach called a running play and pretty much said to everyone, I want to see something executed well before we get out of here. And that was the message to the team. Just something to build. Just something to build on, get it done, and maybe we can look at that and say, we'll get better as we go forward. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. Throwing again, Richardson. He's going to let it fly. And that will be incomplete. Tried to dial up the long one way out there, but it'll be third down. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. From the gun, Richardson. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. Into a double team, and it's intercepted. Picked off around the 27. And they're going to set up shop at the 27-yard line third and long that time he was trying to make something happen but a little too risky well the field tilted on him and what I mean by that is what you said third and long got to push it downfield to try and pick up the first down defensive backs live for this situation and they took advantage of the young man right there throw here muscles him off he'll be brought down by the Broncos it's a sack it would not pass the ball They pitched the second half shutout. Yeah, think about the team that just got vanquished. They did score in the second quarter. Do you think they thought at all that that would be their last point of the game? No, I, but what a second half. The adjustment, whatever they did in the locker room, it certainly worked. It certainly did, and you're exactly right. Whether it was an adjustment, whether it was just more focus on what they planned to do going in, whether they just played better, whatever it was, it all came together in the second half, and no points were allowed. That's a great way to close them out. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn. And this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. From Denver, good night, everybody.